Hello everyone, I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games and try to give them a fun and informative analysis. This week I'm taking a look back to 1978 with the first edition Gamma World box set. This threadbare edition came with a rule book, a post-apocalyptic map of the United States, and polyhedral dice. Inspired by and mechanically based on the very first science fiction role-playing game Jim Ward's Metamorphosis Alpha, Gamma World takes the ideas therein, refines them, and gives them better organization, and then unleashes those ideas on a weird, gonzo, post-apocalyptic 24th century Earth. Sound like fun? It is, so let's just dive right in. Originally published by TSR in 1978, Gamma World is clearly inspired by post-apocalyptic science fiction of the day, Omega Man, Soyant Green, Daybreak, and more. The rulebook opens with a brief summary of the future past of Earth's apocalyptic devastation and how the current situation came about, an explanation of the dice in the game, and then delves directly into world building. An odd choice, but an interesting one, before then going into character creation. For those who are players of Dungeons & Dragons, there is a lot of familiarity here. Polyhedral dice, a D20 based system, 6 ability scores based on a 3 to 18 range, and so on. However, there are no character classes or levels, though experience progression is done in a similar manner, which I'll get to in a moment. Players can play either a pure strain human, a mutated human, or a mutated animal. There are mutated plants, but due to their lack of intelligence and mobility, they are restricted to NPCs. As written originally, the pure strain humans are not as fun to play as the mutants are, and they don't come with any special abilities other than frequently being recognized by certain ancient technological systems that may yet still be functioning in the devastated areas. The first adventure module for the game, Famine in Fargo, has some additional rules that improves the playability of pure strain humans significantly, as well as new mutations and some other handy rules. The six ability scores are Mental Strength, Intelligence, Dexterity, Charisma, Constitution, and Physical Strength. Bonuses for high ability scores occur for those abilities above 15 in most cases. Mental ability use is pretty straightforward. The attacker and defender's mental strength is compared on this chart here, and a 20-sided die is rolled. Roll above the indicated number, and the powers of the ability take effect. Starting Gamma World characters are innately more rugged and powerful than their D&D &D counterparts with hit points being a number of D6s equal to their constitution scores. Humanoid mutants then roll for mutations and randomly assigned defects by the game master. Mutated animals are pretty much the same except that the player chooses a base animal form to mutate and then works out the specifics with the GM. The list of mutant powers is pretty comprehensive with both physical and mental mutations as you can see here. The listings with a D in parentheses are the defects. Mutant powers such as mind control, a mental blast that does 3d6 of damage, light control that makes one invisible and able to deflect lasers, and pretty much any other power you've ever seen in science fiction can be found here, and this is really the heart of the fun of Gamma World. There may be a temptation for modern referees trying this game to use more modern methods for rolling ability scores and perhaps allowing players to choose their mutations based on a concept, but I always consider the gonzo randomness as part of the fun and would avoid such modifications. There is also a pretty comprehensive list of plant mutations to help the GM in creating mutated plants. Combat in Gamma World is actually more akin to Maldve Basic than AD&D, although the game was mostly touted as being compatible with AD&D. Combat rounds are 10 seconds long, just like in D&D, whereas AD&D combat rounds were 1 minute long. The armor class systems are similar as well. Gamma World has three combat tables. The physical attack matrix is based on the weapon class of the weapon being employed, with clubs and mundane hand weapons having the lowest class, and blaster and advanced weaponry having the highest class. 
The Physical Attack Matrix 2 is based on physical attacks not using weapons and is based on a character or creature's hit dice. Finally, there is the Mental Attack Matrix that compares the mental strength of the attacker to the defender to come up with the number needed to hit on a d20. There are about 50 monsters included, though there is no artwork provided for any of them, so the reader will be left with only the written description to determine what the things look like. I imagine this was a spaced and cost-cutting measure, as the included monsters can be listed in a mere five pages. The monsters are right from the pages of science fiction and entail everything from bizarre, mutated, carnivorous plants like the Saroon Lu to the Hissers, which are mutated snake men with mental abilities. Next up are the Cryptic Alliances, and these are the secret societies in Gamma World. The societies listed are both malevolent and benign, such as the Brotherhood of Thought, which is formed to bring about peaceful coexistence between all creatures of intelligence, whereas the Knights of Genetic Purity wish to destroy all mutated humans. Conversely, there is the Iron Society that seeks to eliminate all non-mutated pure strain humans. So in addition to simply the dangerous environment indicated by the mutated plants, animals, and devastated landscape, there is also the conflicts of these various societies to contend with. A lot of the fun of Gamma World is gathering your tribe together, or your player character group, and exploring the ruins of the ancients, seeking artifacts, which is basically technology, some of which still functions decades after the devastation that wrought Armageddon. The list of artifacts here is pretty comprehensive and clearly pulled from the pages of science fiction. Since the Armageddon actually took place hundreds of years after our time, the technology is pretty advanced even by today's standards. Vibroblades, Mark VII blaster rifles, med kits with amazing healing abilities, robots, androids, and fusion bombs that have devastating damage capabilities. Many of these things are usually found in the rubble of the ancients, non-functioning, and frequently can be as deadly to the user as to the user's enemies when not used correctly. And that leads into the way Gamma World cleverly allows for gradual discovery for how all this ancient technology works, by people who've never seen such things before, through the use of the three flowcharts as shown here. The idea being is to move from S, or start, on the chart, to F, or finish, whereby the player character can learn how the thing works, or potentially blow themselves to bits, as indicated by the skull and crossbones on the chart. A d10 is rolled, modified by intelligence to determine the path taken. Finally, there are no character levels. There is a universal experience progression chart that allows for characters to improve characteristics and combat abilities, as shown here. Characters gain experience from slaying creatures to discovering artifacts. Overall, the world building that is provided in these scant 54 pages is minimal at best with much of what the world is like assumed in the artifacts listed and what's suggested by the monster list. The rest is really up to the game master to provide. Later editions would add a lot more backstory and world lore and change up the system significantly, but for a creative GM that's just looking for the framework to hang their own unique post-apocalyptic adventures, Gamma World provides just that and does so fairly efficiently. On page 113 in the ongoing campaign of the first edition Advanced D&D Dungeon Master's Guide, Gary Gygax suggests using Gamma World and providing a gateway there too between fantasy and sci-fi worlds to mix the two systems and provides a rather comprehensive conversion to do just that. I would add that these conversion notes would be appropriate for D&D as well. Also, if you play an OSR like Swords and Wizardry, Old School Essentials, or Labyrinth Lord, the DM's notes here would prove quite useful for those systems as well. In the setting background for Gamma World, it is mentioned that humanity had colonized the stars, so while Earth may have been devastated, there's no reason to believe that all the colonies created were likewise destroyed. Certainly, the crashed spaceship from either Expedition to the Barrier Peaks or City of the Gods 
both of them AD&D and D&D modules in which human-populated spaceships crash land on the player characters' homeworlds, could provide an avenue for an exciting crossover. The rules for first edition Gamma World are very basic and easy to understand, but they do have certain idiosyncrasies. For example, the system has mental strength increasing by one for every five instances of either successful mental attacks or defenses. This level of progression seems rather rapid, at least it did to our group, especially for characters who use mental strength as their primary means of attack, so we altered it so that the number of successful attacks or defenses for advancement was the current number. In essence, if you have a 13 mental strength to raise it to 14 would require 13 successful attacks or defenses. Later editions would refine or alter these rules so much so that the game was Gamma World in name only, resembling nothing like the Gonzo first edition rules. As I established in my review of the World of Greyhawk folio, I am a minimalist game master and the 1E version of the game appeals to me in that it allows for the maximum of flexibility both in regards to the setting and the rules. There were two adventure modules released for this edition, Famine and Fargo and Legion of Gold, both of which are pretty good and available for print on demand at DriveThruRPG. Famine and Fargo is definitely worth picking up not only for the good adventure and world building within, but also the supplemental rules on pure strain humans, making them a more viable player option. Artwork for this edition was done by the reliable team of David Sutherland III and David Trampier, and much of what's presented has become iconic, such as the hopeless character art and the bunnies wearing bandoliers and carrying rifles. It's also quite good in most places, invoking the setting quite well, but unfortunately there is no artwork for the monsters at all. The second edition of the game would rectify this by having artwork for every monster presented, as well as present some cool logos for the various cryptic alliances, but would ramp up the complexity of the rules significantly. The second edition box set also came with some cool color poster maps, so in my mind an amalgam game between the two might be worth investigating. Getting a copy of Gamma World in any edition is pretty easy as all the editions from what I could tell are now available for print on demand at DriveThruRPG. Auction sites like eBay have the first edition of the rolls at rather expensive prices due to the game's collectability and a box set in good condition will run over a hundred dollars so unless you're planning on getting lucky at the flea market print on demand is probably your best way to get your hands on this game i have the print on demand and the original box set for one e gamma world as you can see here the card stock cover for the print on demand wisely uses the color boxed art but then the end pages and black and white cover follows right after, along with a nice two-page layout of the poster map. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the first edition Gamma World box set on my D20 scale of style, presentation, and value. The art and layout of this box set is pretty much classic late 1970s TSR. The page count is a mere 55 pages, and the type set is 10 point, which, when I was 14, didn't bother me that much, but at 55, even with my glasses, I find it a bit straining at times. I feel there could have been more art for the 50 monsters presented, or at least some of the more iconic ones, and just a list of creatures with no art is rather bland, in my opinion. I'll give this a style rating of 15. The rules themselves are very easy to follow and well explained, though the layout is a bit strange. Game Master information is presented first and then mingled in with character creation. Then towards the back of the book, almost as an afterthought, the means of character progression through experience is presented, and I find that, and the overall organization lacking. While the page count here is low, the 10-point typesetting makes this rather text-dense, so there is a lot here. As far as setting information, what is found within is nominal. There is the how we got to this point, background information, what's suggested by the various mutations presented, the monster list, and the massive list of technological artifacts, but the rest is left to the referee's imagination, and in this instance, I look at this as a positive. I'll give this a presentation rating of 17. If 
Finally, for value, this is a bit tricky to classify. I certainly wouldn't pay the collector's prices for an original copy off of eBay. The availability of not only the 1E rules on drive through RPG, but also the two supplements, Famine and Fargo and Legion of Gold, is a big plus. The Game Master screen is also available in PDF, so I'll go ahead and rate this a 16. And that brings my overall rating for the first edition Gamma World box set to a 16. Very good. Thank you all so much for watching. Later this week, I'll follow up this review with a look at the first module for the game, Famine and Fargo. As usual, I'd like to give a big shout out and thank you to my patrons. If you enjoyed this review, please subscribe and click the little bell so you'll get updates when I add new content. Please give this video a like, comment, and share. Join the channel's Facebook page, RPG Reviews, and consider supporting the channel by becoming a Patreon yourself. Or alternatively, you can just send a tip through the PayPal tip jar, link in the description. As always, my friends, may your d20 roll true and game on.